Bridges for Peace is uh, highly regarded around the world. Uh, you've probably heard of it. If not, you're going to hear of it now. Uh, it's, it's a ministry that is um, uh, deeply rooted in the, uh, the land of Israel. And I've had personal contact with Bridges for many, many years. And before I introduce you to the International President and CEO, Rebecca Brimmer, I want you to take a look at this. Over 60 tons of food are distributed every month from the Bridges for Peace Assistance Centers located in Jerusalem and Carmiel. This food is distributed through a variety of programs. The Adopt an Israeli Town program provides food for the needy residents of towns like Beit Shemesh. Working through social workers and community officials, Bridges for Peace delivers parcels of food to needy families. The Feed a Child program provides hot lunches and school supplies for some of the poorest kids in Israel. Bridges for Peace sends fishermen throughout the former Soviet Union to search for Jews who long to call Israel home, but have lost hope. Once they're located, Project Rescue covers the cost for passports, exit visas, ground transportation, and lodging. So far, Bridges for Peace has rescued more than 28,000 Jews who now live in Israel. However, many Jewish people in these Eastern Bloc countries are not able to immigrate to Israel. Through Project Tikva, the Hebrew word for hope, Bridges for Peace has established assistance centers and soup kitchens to care for those who cannot leave. <laughs> the adoption program provides sponsors who support a Jewish family or individual for a year. Many participants in the adoption program are new immigrants. Some are students facing the most critical time in their life. New immigrants also benefit from the Welcome Program gift package. By providing for some of their most basic needs, Bridges for Peace eases the transition for these newest Israeli citizens. The home repair team are all skilled workers who volunteer to go into the people's homes, paint, plaster, fix plumbing and electrical problems, repair the broken doors and windows and install handrails for the elderly. For the people of Israel, war and acts of terrorism are woven like a constant thread through everyday life. The love shown by Christian volunteers by providing for special needs like wheelchairs and food vouchers and financial assistance shows the victims of war. They are not alone. All of these programs allow Christian volunteers to be your hands and your feet to personally deliver these gifts with your love to the Israeli people. Rebecca, or as I know her, Becky, uh, is here. Uh, you were here a year ago, and I was Storm State in Newfoundland, or I would have interviewed you then. I'm glad I've got you this year. Well, thank you. Welcome it's great back. To, great to be with you. <laughs> nice to see you again. Well, hey, you, you've been in Israel with your husband, Tom, for almost 20 years, right? More than that, 21 years Tw now. Is it 21? 21 years, yeah. 21 years. And when you first came to Israel, you, you lived on a kibbutz up in, was up, up in the Galilee? Yes, up in the, up in the Jezreel Valley, the, mm -hmm. or as we know in the scripture, Armageddon Valley. Right, yeah, <laughs> the Valley of Megiddo. Yeah. Um, there's something going on in Israel right now. We should, we should um, uh, cover it. I, I mentioned Simchat Torah. Simchat right. means uh, joy of, right. of the Torah, or joy of the law. Yeah. Uh, today is that day. What, what, what does that mean in Israel? Well, in Israel, they take the Torah scrolls out of the arks in the synagogue and go into the streets. And people, you will see people kissing the Torah, dancing around it, singing songs of joy. They throw, ch they throw candy to the kids because the Bible should be something that always brings joy. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's really a special time. In fact, you know, when Tom and I first went to Israel, we were so amazed to find out that the holidays are all holy days. They're all listed in the Bible. Uh, we loved that. <laughs> yeah, in fact, uh, you know, the seven years we lived there, uh, my kids especially uh, loved the rhythm of the year because there were so many holy days. Yeah. And, and uh, <laughs> they especially loved the high holy days, which are just ending today. Right. Rebecca, tell me about Bridges for Peace. Uh, we've got a lot of viewers of, you know, are meeting you and the ministry mm. for the first time. Uh, what, what essentially is it? And give us a little s sort of uh, thumbnail sketch of the history. 
Right. Well, Bridges for Peace is really a reconciliation ministry. Uh, we recognize that the Jewish people have experienced a lot of pain and, uh, in their past. And unfortunately, they believe that most of it came from Christians. Mm. So as Christians, uh, we're doing what we can to change that attitude. And we're doing it through our actions. Jesus said, you know, they will see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Um, so that's one side of our bridge. The other side of our bridge is to the Christian world because as most Christians in the West, we really don't know how much the history of our forefathers, how it has damaged the relationships between the people that God chose to reveal himself to the world and Christianity. Mm. So we're, we're trying to remove the black eye that Christianity has given Jesus over the centuries. And this is the concept of the bridging. This is, Bridges because there's a huge gap between the Christian and Jewish world, yeah. uh, a gap that is filled with a lot of pain. I, I'm sure you're aware, but many of our listeners may not be aware that most Jewish people believe that Hitler was a Christian. Yeah. Yeah. They believe that six million of their family members were killed by Christians. Yeah. And that's a pain that takes a long time to overcome. I have an Orthodox Jewish friend, his name is Moshe, and he says, you know, us Jews, we're, we're like abused children. We find it very difficult to trust, and especially those we view as the abusers. So at Bridges for Peace, we really feel like God has told us to, to exhibit the character of Jesus to the people of Israel through our actions. You know, I, uh, I visited, not, not the only time, but I remember the first time I visited one of your uh, uh, depots where you distribute food mm -hmm. with your predecessor. And uh, uh, while we were there and he was showing me around, uh, I saw this uh, big box van pull up and they were starting to load uh, boxes of groceries onto it and they were all uh, ultra-Orthodox um, <laughs> Jewish people from Israel from one of the settlements and uh, I was uh, interested in that. I said, these are ultra-Orthodox and he said, yeah, he said, we have, um, he said, we, we, are the, we are the source for a number of uh, uh, ultra-Orthodox feeding programs. That's true. Uh, I, I, I was blown away by that. Tell yeah. me about that. Well, you know, uh, it's, it's amazing that there is, a, there is a connection that's growing between people who believe in the book. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the Orthodox Jewish people really do accept the Bible as the Word of God. And we as Bible-believing Christians as well. So we actually have some really good touch points of understanding. Uh, but beyond that, Bridges for Peace has just really gotten a good reputation in Israel. And people trust us. Uh, to stand with them and to show God's love to them in a non-confrontational manner. And so they feel at ease to receive from us. But we're helping lots of people, not yeah. just Orthodox people. Yeah. We're helping 27,000 people a month uh, from 54 communities. We work with mayors in 18 towns. And it's everything from secular to religious in the society. Uh, it's wide, wide range. It's surprising, I think, for the uh, outside observer to realize that there is poverty in Israel. There's the